I call this video uh, Jack Smack's Greatest Hits. It's a collage of some of his most memorable messages uh, from his Grace Saves 772 channel as well as a couple from the Jack Smack 77 channel. Uh, I'm not going to say much. I'm just, I'm just going to let it speak for itself. I know that my manner of uh, putting to this stuff together is kind of primitive, but uh, I'm an old man and old people got old ways. I, I don't know how to work the modern technology. Uh, so just be patient if I get a hang up here or there and you watch and uh, pray for God to give you discernment about what's going on here. Jeff Payton's a false prophet. Okay, testing, one, two, three, testing. This sermon's entitled, Why Jeff Payton is Going to Hell. Now, I've already done this sermon a long time ago. I did ten reasons why it's going to hell. I'm going to do ten more reasons. And they may, some of the reasons may overlap, but that sermon was lost. So I'd like to open with prayer, and then with a few verses, and then I'm going to explain to you why this is true. This is not just me, uh, me... I'm not just not, I'm not doing this out of anger. I really don't like to do this, but I don't, I don't want to think that anyone's going to hell. But this man is, is for sure going there, and I'm going to prove why. Okay, this sermon's entitled "Why Daniel." Let me grab his name. Daniel Leyland Jr. is on his way to hell right now, and I'm going to prove this. And I'm going to tell you right now, if this man is not on his way to hell. He should be. <clears throat> now, first you're wondering who is this guy. I'm going to tell you who he is. We just... Okay, this sermon's entitled, Can a Person Be Sanctified and Still End Up in Hell? The answer to this question is yes, they can. There are people out there that are trusting in their sanctification. They're, they're making that part of salvation. And people that are, that are doing this are not saved. You say, I can't believe you just, you just said that. In fact, if you've always believed sanctification was part of salvation, you're not saved. You're not saved by anything you do. Sanctification is what you do. You're saved by what Christ did. And All right, I've, I've got a break in on him here. I can't, I can't let this pass. Uh, he just said that if you, th if you think that uh, sanctification is part of salvation, that you're lost, uh, that it's what you do and not what God does. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. In another place, Paul wrote that this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus, even your sanctification. And Jesus said in John chapter 17, and I believe it's verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jack really doesn't know what he's talking about. He's got a uh, doctrinal position that he wants to defend, and uh, he'll use any means necessary to do it, even at the expense of uh, sound exegesis of Scripture. He likes big words. So I thought I'd throw that in for him in case he's watching. Okay, let's go on here. Sorry about that. Okay, this sermon's entitled, 10 Reasons Why Jesse Morell, the Street Preacher, is Unsaved and Going to Hell. And this is the Bible reasons now. Okay, this is not my opinion. This is just the Word of God. So let me open up with prayer and then with a few verses. 
All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, there is a false prophet out there. His name is Jesse Morell. He's a skinny, goofy-looking dork who, who carries around a picket sign. On it, you know, it's a gigantic sign that says like "Turn or Burn" or something on it, or "Repent of your sins." Or it's some works garbage, is what it is. And he goes around the street, you know, he goes around on the streets and on the college campuses, and he yells at people, and everyone cusses him out. People throw stuff at him. I believe he's been slapped a few times, and nobody gets saved from his garbage because you can't get saved through that because it's not a saving message. Signs. Yes. Okay. Now this is for others. Like I said, it's for you give you need to give this out to other people. Now let's go down my list and look at some of my strategies. Remember, he just condemned Jesse Morrill for walking around uh, with a sign on. Okay. Number one, we need to make gospel signs. A gospel sign is very important to have, and I don't see why Christians are not wearing these, or at least putting it on their car. Or something, or putting it on your door. You know what? What's so hard about it? Are you ashamed of the name of Christ? Those that don't have a gospel sign, yes, you are. You know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation to the to the Jew first and every, no to, to the Jew first to everyone that believeth. Back up, everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So don't be ashamed of God. Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ, your Savior. If you're saved. Why are you ashamed of him? The people that don't have a gospel sign they, they, and they won't wear one around their neck. Or they won't at least wear something that's emblematic of, of, of Jesus Christ saving them. They're ashamed. Sad. It's sad. They're just flat ashamed of the gospel. Too ashamed to wear a sign around you. Hey, I wear a sign everywhere I go. And I think every Christian who's saved, and, and every Christian is saved, by the way. That's, that's kind of a fun... Look, everyone who's free grace <clears throat> should be wearing a, a grace sign around your neck. And it can say anything you want as long as it's got some type of message. Like, for by grace are you saved through faith. Salvation is by the grace of God. My shirt says that. Salvation is a free gift from God. It's grace. And that's what, that's what it says. And then it's got Ephesians 2, 8, 9 on it. Okay. This is from the uh, the bunch that uh, says, Judge not, lest you be judged. That condemns everyone as fruit inspectors. Uh, that's who that Jack hangs out with. That's his crowd. Okay, testing one, two, three. This sermon's entitled, Non-Soul Winners Are Not Worth Spitting On. Yes, that's the name of the sermon, and I'm going to prove this with the Bible. Dear God, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for allowing us to uh, have, have a clear understanding of your word, and thank you for verses that tell us that we need to go soul winning and to tell people about you know how to be saved. Keep us safe and bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, some may think this is kind of a harsh title, and you know what, I really don't care. Because you know what? The Bible backs this up. Okay? My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made, touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. If a person can go their whole life, and they, a person can be, you know, a saved person, you know, a Christian, whatever you want to call it, and then not share this good news with others, the Bible says they're worthless, they're worthless people. Now, let me, let me prove this. Turn over to 1 John chapter 4. And then he goes on to uh, tell you what the Bible doesn't say. That it doesn't call anyone worthless who doesn't share the gospel. It's, it's I mean, every Christian has, has uh, the witness within them. And should be led of the Spirit. And be willing uh, to 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 step out in faith and declare the gospel to a lost and dying world, but not everyone's a preacher. Not everyone uh, is gifted with with that ability. Some people are are backwards, as a matter of fact, and and uh, all of these things are gifts. Their gifts, the gift of evangelism, the gift of prophecy, the gift of pastor, the gift of teaching, Paul wrote about in uh, Ephesians. You don't just take it upon yourself to do these things. If you do, 
you wind up like this man whose videos we're watching who obviously has no unction whatsoever there's no power in what he's preaching I remember when I first got on YouTube about three years ago seeing his videos well I, I watched maybe a half a dozen of them and I couldn't take the guy anymore they say that I am burdensome in my preaching and teaching they complain that I uh, uh, bring conviction to people and, and, and really bum them out, man. When you talk about somebody condemning, I mean, I, there, there's not a soul on YouTube that I've damned to hell. All I've ever done, if I met somebody who I was confident was going to hell, was try to win them to Jesus, try to love them to the Lord. I tell you what, man, you got to do more than wave a grace banner around to be a real live grace preacher. There's a fact. Thank you for giving us your word and allowing us to, uh, to have truth and to take a stand and to know that your word is true and no matter what anyone says. Keep us safe and bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, what is, who is Dan Corner? Dan Corner is a wicked devil who's a goat. He's going to be going straight to hell when he dies. And quite frankly, I, I don't even care at this point. The, the damage he's done to the body of Christ. I think we started this with uh, Jack saying that it's really hard to judge where somebody's going, and I, I don't like this. And this last clip, we just ended it with Jack saying, this guy's going to hell, and frankly, I don't even care. And you know what, really, that's the attitude that, that he has, and it shows in every video that he makes. He has one purpose, and that is to be right, to defend the uh, position of the Grace Evangelical Society to contend not for the faith once delivered to the saints, but for the teachings of Zane Hodges and Bob Wilkins. He, I, I, I just, I mean, man, he is one of the most condemning individuals I've ever seen in my life. He damns everybody to hell. If you don't agree with him, you're going to hell. That's it, man. There's no allowance. I'll tell you what. They have come on my videos, he and Duck4212, and their buddy Jose, uh, wh who, whatever he goes by, and told me that I'm lost, I'm just a work salvationist, I'm a heretic, I'm this and that and the other. All I'm saying about these guys, and I, I've never said any of them are lost, what I am saying is if they are saved, they're babies. They're babes. And it's a shame that they don't have someone uh, in their vicinity who, who can take them under their wings and instruct them in the ways of the Lord. I can't imagine anybody calling himself a minister of the grace of God and behaving in the manner that these men behave in. It's, it's positively shameful. Positively shameful. Shameful. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, 
if peradventure God will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. That is what a minister of the gospel of Christ should be doing. That should be teaching, instructing, pleading with these people, reasoning with them, showing patience to them. I had a most remarkable thing happen uh, just the other day. So there's a man here named uh, Dolphins Daryl. Well, Daryl and I, we go back a long ways. I've had to block Daryl a couple of times over the course of the three years I've been on YouTube. But there's been a change in Daryl because, see, I would just block him long enough for him to cool down. And then I would open it back up and he'd come back. And each time he did, I always gently but, but firmly... Uh, expressed my views of the scriptures. And Daryl now believes that salvation is of the Lord and it is eternal and that once you have been born again, you cannot lose your salvation. He even took down the old videos he had where he uh, talked about uh, losing your salvation. Brother, I'm telling you, that is God working in a heart that's receptive and open to the truth. In a heart that's not arrogant, puffed up, filled with pride, unteachable. That's a man who is honest and humble before God. And I'm afraid that so many of the people here who promote themselves as teachers, who are looked up to as teachers, lack this humility. And it's, it's not something that you generate. It's something that comes from, 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 from a fear of the Lord. And one thing's for certain, these men that I've been talking about for the past few videos don't fear God. If they did, they wouldn't talk the way that they do. If they did, they wouldn't make light of the holiness that God requires the way that they do. Remember what Peter wrote in 1 Peter. He said that we are as obedient uh, children, uh, not fashioning ourselves according to the former lust in our ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And this statement was made right after he said that we are those who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. There is the biblical call for holiness in the life of the believer and the doctrine of eternal security in the same chapter written by the Apostle Peter. Now, friends, we need to make a decision. Are we going to believe God? Or are we going to believe man? Are we going to tremble at God's word? Or are we going to fear the criticism of those who would snap and nip at our heels every step we take? I've experienced the hell that these people can unleash on you. They come in packs, but they, they soon get tired and they go away. And let me tell you, it's a blessed thing when they do. I, I hope that you're edified by these uh, videos that I've been putting up. The Bible says over in the book of Romans, give me just a second to flip to it here, Romans chapter number 15. Or verse, or chapter sixteen, and verse starting in verse seventeen says, "Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple." And that's what 
they're doing. They're finding carnal Christians, young Christians, babes who have perhaps uh, fallen into sin after they've been saved and, and, and they're confused and they don't understand what's going on and, and the devil's just beating them to death about it. And they begin to, to give them a feel-good message to, to teach them not to worry about it. It'll be all right. Don't make any effort. Just trust that you're saved. Well, that, yes, that's true. That's true. But also trust that God is able to bring you out of that sin. If the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And that's what Jesus does. He makes the sinner free. God bless you, friends.